The air is dry. I can't tell whether or not the leaves are changing due to fall or being baked at 110 degrees for three months. I desire crunchy leaves beneath my toes and an autumn wind beckoning me through the coffee stand drive through for the spice. I am ready to get cozy. I am ready to get spooky. I'm red. And this week we are going to indulge our wicked selves in something so otherworldly, so diabolical, that I only need one word to describe it to you. Come home, or make thyself known. That is right, my spooky little witches. This week, we are making our very own spell book. <laughs> we all love the spell book. I remember as a wee bear, and I used to look at that thing and go, I could write a lot of fan fiction in that. <laughs> That's a lie. At that age, I was using all of my diaries to write my crush Brian's name over and over again in little heart shapes and design grass blade necklaces for him after he showed me how. <laughs> Though the Spellbook's design is as iconic as one of Fred's Queen Elizabeth vibes, we are here to sprinkle a little extra on this puppy. Keeping the original design in mind, I wanted to give the Spellbook a little upgrade. I decided to throw away the stitched skin and replace it with branches and a massive wooden door. The snakes are no longer spaced in thirds. Instead, I have them acting as the gate's metal frame. As for the eye, that's staying in approximately the same spot while the center of the cover is taken up by the massive door knocker. For the spine, I really wanted it to look like an autumnal spell book. So we're going with pumpkin vines and little autumn leaves. Let the wedding chimes bring happy times for Mandy and me. First things first, you gotta go into your pile of liberated wood found in the corner of everyone's home. The size didn't particularly matter, but we do want it to be square, so I put a crow's foot at the 16 inch mark. What other form of measurement marking would you expect from me? I cut the first one with my circular saw just in case you have one of those lying around. You could do it a couple of different ways. The rest of them I just put through the table saw so I could get really consistent lengths. Feel free to use anything that can cut wood but still maintain square. When the frame is complete, I put crow's foot marks at every two inch point so I knew exactly where I wanted to put my hooks. Now that we have all of our shite together, we can start. But before we start, I need to show off my latest thrift find because it's the coolest thing in the world. Are these not the most beautiful, spectacular things you've ever seen in your life? <laughs> I have peaked. It's happened. I've peaked. My thrift finding days are over. This is as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> First things first, before we get started with the actual binding of the book, we've got to add some twine in between these hooks here, make them nice and tight. And then I'm going to measure out the paper, rip that out since I want the edges to look old. I'm not going to be cutting them out. So if they're a little uneven, that's okay. It's a vibe and that's what we're going for. <laughs> Already tested out the way it would look if I ripped the edges and I really, really like that. Ah! Break things. <laughs> okay. We're gonna set weights down, okay? <laughs> so I want all the pages to be the width of nine inches, but since we're gonna be tearing both sides, I'm probably gonna bring it to nine and a half. I was out. So this couldn't be a video by me if I didn't <laughs> up within the first five seconds of doing this, having it go out this way drawing across would make a book that opens up like this instead of like this at least i was drawing it in pencil i cut out the desired number of sections for the pages each section gave me two pages i then separated them all into stacks of three to four sections and for some reason my brain didn't think that's what you were supposed to do in book binding but this is absolutely what you're supposed to do so that's one for justine <laughs> now we grab our embroidery needle and get to work since this is my first time book binding i won't pretend to know what i'm doing i just followed the tutorial linked in the description as closely as i could and it seemed to work look see Okay, 
We've got the first signature done. I kind of didn't think this was gonna work. <laughs> I was fully prepared for me to get in the way. <laughs> Um, it seems like it's just the same thing over and over again until we've got, um, pages sewn together. We're gonna speed through this as well to signatures. It is done, I think. I can now cut this off. I masterfully measured everything. <laughs> it's, it's a little wucky. So, <laughs> and now a word from our sponsor. There's a lot of thorns. Bitten them. Why does that sound so weird? Why am I listening to this? He's an alpha. He doesn't need to know how to control it. He just comes naturally because he's an alpha. I'm around my brothers, so I can't think of the naked woman in the bathtub, which I walked in on, unannounced, uninvited, because my wee-wee will get too hard in front of my brothers. Why do I take recommendations from book talk? Okay, once I've recovered from that, uh, that audiobook, I'm going to work on the cover. Because I can't, I can't say anything right now. I thought it being an innuendo. <sighs> All right, I think we need to take a moment. You just throw up in your mouth? Me too. Corson, you look like freaking cryptid out there. Jesus. What is she doing? Corson! 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 Oh my god! Why? What are you doing? That was so creepy! Oh my god! <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <sighs> look, look! We have a book. <laughs> All right, I think I'm just gonna do my best to cut the edges off. I'm not gonna beat myself up if it's uneven because this is supposed to look old and gross. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep telling myself that so I feel better about it. So we're gonna cut the edges off here to make everything actually... <laughs> oh, it's so bad. <laughs> make everything line up. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right. <laughs> Finally, we get to work on the cover. Using chipboard sheets, I drew out the desired measurements for the cover and created the end paper for the inside, then glued that along the edges. I did this for both sides of the book. Then back into the book press for a time out before I began the process of rounding out the back. I didn't have any leather on hand, but I did have this super thin faux leather I bought like nine years ago and used this for the spine. Even though I'll be covering the spine with clay as well, it was nice to give it some added structure. And to make my life easier for day two, I conditioned my polymer clay a whole day early. How do I do it? With my bare hands, of course. <laughs> you fool. Don't you know I do push-ups so I can condition my clay? Welcome to day two. So safe to say this is gonna be my first don't try this at home. I'm gonna take my polymer clay. We're gonna do the sculpty sculpt. We're gonna get all that done. And then I'm going to wrap the pages in tin foil and we're gonna bake on low. Fingies crossed, Gojo style, that nothing sets on fire. Okay, yeah, cool. Welcome to my channel. I'm a professional. I ended up not liking the little keyhole accessories I bought, so I made my own ornaments for the door. The leftover chipboard scraps worked perfectly. The next step actually intimidated me the most because I didn't really know how to make realistic vines while also ensuring I could get this done quickly. Oh, and of course we have the eyeball. Making it look like the book's vines had come to life and were giving its eyeball a little scratchy scratch was so cute to me. <laughs> spooky, but cute. A spooky cutie, like me. <laughs> Thank you.
Ochre Doker. We have... <laughs> it looks so freaking cool! When I put this in the oven, somehow having it in there for like five minutes was too much. And I don't know, I thought all of this was pretty thick. So I just baked it for too long. Cause th this stuff is supposed to be flexible. Okay, I use this for my fairy entomology video. And if you only give her one bake, she's really flexible. You can squish it. So it's fine. Uh, I think this looks really cool. I also kind of like how even with the glue, the steps kind of morphed up because of the cardstock. So I, I think that looks kind of cool. I feel like it makes it look more natural. Like there's just dirt and stuff underneath there, which we will add. I will be adding moss to all of this. <laughs> Now that we have our precious autumnal spine sculpted and baked, it is time! Player one, ready your painter. Every good painter must be equipped with an apron. Yes, that's good. Now she's going to need something to keep her noggin protected at all times. Odd block is a fickle thing, you know, just swoops into the cranium and starts wreaking havoc. Ah, splendid. Now that we've covered that, we must move on to tools of the trade. Oh, dear. We, well, we didn't account for clumsiness, now did we? And no painter can doodle in silence. Thus, well, I would normally recommend a pleasant audiobook, but this painter is a broke-ass bitch and spent her monthly credit on a spicy audiobook. Don't you talk back to me. It cost a whole credit. Now shut up, smile, and get your money's worth. Hello there, Texas. What you say? Are you whistling in the dark just to scare the ghosts away? I know there's something following me that I can't see. Someone sure laid an awful hex on me. A hex? Aw, oh, Texas, that's pretty far best. Man, I think you're just a little bit tense. If you'd have got a load of what I saw last night, you'd have passed the Yankee Clipper on its maiden flag. Last night I saw upon the stair a little man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. Oh, how I wish he'd go away. I came home last night at three. Was waiting there for me, but when I looked around the hall, I couldn't see him there at all. You'd have got a load of what I saw last night. You'd have passed the Yankee Clipper on his maiden flight. It's a spooky book. I hope you guys enjoyed this project as much as I did. <laughs> Oop. Oh, you're shedding. Cool. So let's just go, let's just go straight into the, the goods and the negatives. <laughs> I got to learn about book binding. That was pretty cool. I've been very curious about book binding for a long time now. Mistakes were made and corners cut, but in the end, we made something a little spooky. And I think it'll look really cool displayed in my future office. Now for the negatives. I really need to stop being so nervous about trying things out before I film. <laughs> I know I'm trying to get things done as quickly as possible. There's a time crunch. I have like a limited amount of time between work and my OnlyFans and getting everything scheduled out so that it'll be, you know, every two weeks on YouTube, which I know I have messed up a few times already and been a little bit longer than that. Like now <laughs> I need to just give myself 
like a day or an afternoon to test things. And one of those things is I need to figure out how long I should bake cosplay for <laughs> because of the details on this thing. It's so much fun to work with. I love it. You can get these tiny, tiny little details in there, especially if you want to spend extra time sculpting before you bake. There's so much you can do with this stuff, but I just, I baked it for too long. But now that I think about it, all the videos that I watched where people made book covers with polymer clay, they didn't do what I did, which was they kept their cover details flat and I made mine stick out. <laughs> I made mine a little too 3D-esque. So that's my problem. I just wanted it to, I wanted it to be a certain way. And my way means stuff breaks. Oopsie poopsie. <laughs> Because when it comes to cosplay, you have it in the oven and you look at it and you touch it and you're like, oh, that's still soft. That's still soft. I should leave it in longer. It's like, no, take it out now. <laughs> that's exactly when you should be taking it out <laughs> is when it feels like it's not baked <laughs> because it will harden. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. And my most exciting news of all, we reached 100K. <laughs> I didn't think this would happen, um, especially not as quickly as it did. I know I've been paying for advertisements, but I, I've paid for adver advertisements on plenty of other platforms and nothing like this has ever happened, especially on Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. I've applied for the silver YouTube play button, which you get when you reach 100K and I'm hoping that happens soon. Uh, I've got to wait like 10 days from the point where I, I reached 100 thousand and YouTube will be like, yes, your channel is good enough for us to give you the thing in which you have earned. <laughs> we freaking reached it. You guys, we, you, you reached it. We reached it. You, you're the reason we reached it. <laughs> Someone actually gave me a really, really good idea for an upcoming video and I might squeeze that in between all of the autumn content. I just don't know when that'll happen. Fingers crossed I get the silver play button because that's kind of integral the video I'm planning. No spoilers. One more announcement apart from the giant announcement of 100k. If you are not familiar, over on my Patreon I do monthly giveaways and this month's giveaway is my original comic in which I drew many many moons ago in which I had a Patreon where I drew spicy fan art. <laughs> so in this month's monthly giveaway there will be three winners. All three will win a physical copy signed by moi of The Nun's Mistake, my original spicy comic. It's also a horror, horror comic. It's scary. Ooh. Ah. Spicy, spooky comics that I made with my bare hands and took over 500 hours to make, by the way, which is another reason why I don't think I'm gonna be making another. This is very limited edition. <laughs> Head on over to my Patreon for $5 a month and you can join my doodlers and chaos goblins. I believe we have 111 members. I love you guys so much. That is all the self-promoting I will do. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. You guys are the ones who keep me going. I could not and would not be doing any of this without you. And just having you all here is more than I could have ever hoped for and would ever think would happen. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smile this much when I'm at work. This hurts. <laughs> and I will always do my best to add a little bit of fun and whimsy to your lives. And and a dash of cringe here and there. Because you know what? Let's face it, all right? We're going to get real. If we're going to be friends, you got to suffer with me. I saw him in the bathtub, brother. His, eyes, His eyes darkened and they were roommates. I love your faces. Remember to make the thing and stay inspired. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Goodbye. Gonna sit back with some genuinely excellent content. Oh God. <laughs> oh, I had to censor that. <laughs> okay, don't mind me. That's a good demon butt. I'm running, I'm going up the stairs. All my wig's falling out of my shit. Oh God, make myself known. This isn't as realistic as it would be because I had her do it again. But it's like, Meryl, it's a really cute fit you got on. Thanks, but, but actually, I'll live my parents' house. <laughs> Slay. <laughs>